Our brain comes equipped with some pretty powerful survival tools. In the previous video, we unpacked two of them, fight and flight. And in this video, we're going to dive deeper into a unique phenomenon called freeze. Frequently, fight, flight, and freeze are tied together into one construct, but they are actually very different systems interacting within us to create safety in the world. We all experience freeze on a pretty regular basis. If you've ever had the experience of hearing a loud sound or seeing something that might be unexpected and turning quickly, catching it with your eye, and pausing to make sense of what that is, that's a freeze response. It's also known as an orienting response. It's a way our brain and our body create space to make sense of novel stimuli in the environment. In a trauma response, though, it turns into something larger. And that same microsecond freeze response takes over our entire system, slowing down our heart rate and our breath, turning our system into a state of calm and quiet, while our vision and our awareness focuses in on whatever is the perceived threat. The idea is to be as quiet, small, and silent as possible, almost as though we're trying to become invisible. That makes sense in the face of a perpetrator when we know that fighting isn't an option and if we run, they'll come after us. As children, this can become a very viable option when we're living in a chaotic or dangerous environment. When we know that no matter what we do, that perpetrator is going to grab us. Because as children, we are vulnerable. And when our system has learned or experienced a mechanism of survival enough times, and the fact that we're re-experiencing that survival mechanism means it keeps working because we keep surviving, that can become a go-to mechanism. Over the course of time, building in a natural freeze response in the face of any perceived threat, it doesn't have to be real, just something that our brain is saying, hey, that reminds me of something that was scary or could be scary, whether that something was scary now or 25 years ago. That response gets ingrained and we shut down and disconnect, go into a free state. In polyvagal theory, they talk about the dorsal vagal response and that's what this is, the entire system shutting down. And it can take quite some time to mobilize back into movement. And it can be very scary to be in this space. We're simply moving out of the reality that we're in and we're unable to create change or make movement. A lot of my patients who have the freeze response have also developed depression, lethargy, fatigue, a slow moving space in the world around them that rides shotgun with feelings of helplessness and shame. Being in a freeze response is very complicated and very painful. It can feel like we can't make change in the world around us and we are at mercy to whatever is going to happen. An important part of recovering from living or in or repeatedly experiencing the freeze response is finding agency, meaning, and purpose. An agency can be something so small as putting on running shoes in the morning with the possibility of maybe possibly taking a walk. Those little micro movements of change let our system know that we can move forward and do something different. In extreme forms, freeze can become dissociation, and I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. And if you're experiencing freeze, remember to lean in with self-compassion. Shame ups the ante on that freeze response, and when we recognize, hey, mind, body, you're just keeping me alive, that in of itself lessens the shame, enhances self-compassion, which then starts to encourage movement, agency, and motivation, thus moving the healing journey forward. Mm -hmm.